Yes, uh, welcome uh, to this uh, workshop, the translation workshop um, of the Dataverse uh, uh, user interface. I would like to present the, the, uh, the two main presenters for today. That is Laura Huizenveld. She's working uh, for Dance. She is a functional manager for Dataverse NL, and she's also working for the Shock project. And uh, Veronica uh, Heider, she's working for AUSDA and she is a uh, data manager at, uh, at AUSDA. And she's also working for uh, the SHOP project. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the housekeeping rules is that please mute, mute yourself, post questions in the chat, and then we will put the, end, the, the questions uh, in, uh, in a Google Doc so we can uh, answer it uh, during the Q&A part of the workshop. The session will be recorded and made available afterwards. And now I remember I have to introduce <laughs> Laura and Veronica again, I'm sorry. Um, next slide, please. So this program from today is a short introduction about shock and task 5.2 by myself, then an introduction uh, of the web light tool by Laura, then experience from translating to German uh, from Veronica. So Ausda already tried to translate the user interface to German in a previous project. Then we have a, a, a long session of Q&A. So please, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat and uh, we will try to answer them. And after the Q&A, there will be kind of planning. Once the idea is that, that you are going to, um, to translate the user interface and that we have in September or the beginning of October, a follow-up session to evaluate uh, your experiences. Next slide, please. So a short introduction to shock and task 5.2. Next slide, please. So SHOCK is the Social and Humanities Open Cloud Project. It is a Horizon 2020 project. I expect everyone of you knows already uh, of this project or are one way or another involved in the project. Uh, within this project, there is task five and within task five, there is task 5.2, where we are working on a, on, a, on, on a repository infrastructure based on uh, Dataverse. Next slide, please. Uh, in, this, in, this, um, in this task, SHOCK 5.2, we are trying to make the Dataverse software that is developed by the Institute for Quantitative Social Sciences in Harvard, we will we may, we are trying to make this compliant to the needs of the social science and humanity researchers in Europe. Uh, there are four ERGs involved, uh, six institutes, the University of Göttingen, the uh, University of Potsdam, they are both partners of DARIA, uh, the University of Tromso, that, that, that is partner of Claren. CNR is uh, an Italian instit research in infrastructure that is, uh, belongs to ERES. And AUSDA and DANS, that are two SESTA uh, service providers, and they all both belong to SESTA. Next slide, please. What we are developing is uh, a lot of things. We develop previewers, uh, we develop uh, migration solutions, uh, connection to local uh, PIP providers, and uh, interoperability with controlled vocabulary and thesaurus. And also what we have done is a translate, translation service for translation of the user interface in the European languages. And that's the main topic of this, uh, this webinar today. And I think this is my last slide, so I will, uh, would like to give the floor to Laura. Hello, everyone. Uh, I wanted to tell you today about uh, Weblate. I'll give you a short introduction. Uh, and I will focus on the collaboration functionality of Weblate. And then at the end, I will uh, give some proposals on how to work together uh, with using this tool. Uh, so first, the introduction. Why Weblate? Uh, first of all, uh, this tool gives you a friendly interface 
for, for translating it. So um, instead of um, looking at all the, for example, in Dataverse, the bundle open properties file, you have a nice screen, a nice interface, and um, yeah, you don't have to work in the text file. Uh, another advantage is that you can keep track of your progress. So you can see what you've done. Uh, you can see which parts of the translation uh, needs editing and the parts that um, yeah you need to review. And one other more uh, most important thing is that when you upgrade your Dataverse software, uh, the tool will automatically detect the untranslated strings or the that for in case of an upgrade, these are the lines that are, that are added with the upgrade or edited. So you don't have to compare your bundle open properties files with each other. It will be done automatically and you can just, uh, yeah, start with um, translating what needs to be done instead of spending time on comparing. Uh, and lastly, it offers uh, functionality to collaborate with other translators. Uh, and I will get back to that later. Um, okay, so some web plate basics. Uh, within the task 5.2, we have installed uh, the web plate application on the SESTA server. Um, and um, I will tell you some basic things, but if you want more information, I can, uh, well, we recommend to take a look at our other previous webinar. The, the slides are available on Zenodo. And we also made a uh, Veronica and I a user guide, especially for this workshop, that you can also visit. It has some, uh, yeah, kind of user manual. Um, well, below you see a screenshot of the main part of the interface, the most important part. Um, this is, um, well, let me tell you first about how WebLate works because it works with projects and components. Uh, in the Dataverse use case, the components are the bundle point properties file, and you have one file per metadata block, and you have a solar file. Uh, and I wanted to mention that we still have some problems with uh, translating the solar file because the file is not supported by uh, WebLate, but we hope to get a solution for that uh, in the summer. But for now, the, the most part is uh, most part of the user interface is in the bundle and properties files. Um, well, you can see this in the screenshot. It's, it's the, um, the basic part, the most main part of the user interface. You can see the key. Uh, this is how the, the string is uh, used in the code, the Dataverse code. Then you see the English string. So this is the, the source. And then in this case, you see the, the Dutch language mentioned. And there you have a text field to uh, type in your own translation. Uh, you can save it directly. You can save it as a suggestion. Or you can skip to... Uh, go to the next one and take a look at it later. That, that's the most basic uh, introduction I can give, I think. Um, so if you want to know more, I can recommend uh, reading the guide or taking a look at the uh, previous webinar. But I want to concentrate now on um, the collaboration functions within WebLate. Uh, you can collaborate on language level. Um, so you can, um, if you work on the same language, you can do that at the same time because uh, WebLate, it registers the strings that have already been translated. Um, so you can see what, what has been done. So you don't do double work. Um, you can save suggestions. So if you're not sure you can take, uh, let your colleague take another look at it. Um, you can also uh, appoint a reviewer. 
So maybe this is someone who has a final say about uh, the final translation. And what more, you can add comments. So you can see that in the screenshot here, if you have saved the translation and you want to explain a bit why you chose, chose a word or a, a translation or term, uh, you can use this in a comment, but you can also start a discussion here about, for example, why the term is better than the other one. Um, so this is how you can collaborate on language level, but I think uh, most important is also the glossary function. Uh, this glossary serves as a kind of a style guide, so you can save uh, for terms that often occur in the Dataverse user interface and you want to keep the, the translation of these terms consistent, you can save your translation for it in the glossary. So when another translator uh, sees a string and the string contains a term from uh, that's in that glossary, it will be shown in the uh, sidebar. So it, the translator knows, okay, I should use this translation for this term because it was saved this way. Um, sorry. I'm having trouble with switching to the next, but here it goes. <laughs> um, well, next to collaboration within a language, you can also collaborate in between languages. Uh, and this has to do with the source string. Uh, for data first, it is, uh, the strings are in English, so the source language is English. Um, and you can add, for example, screenshots to the source strings. Um, for example, if you have the word to to translate, that's a bit vague, but you can maybe try and find out where in this user interface this to uh, will be displayed. For example, in the contact form, you can make a screenshot of it and add this as information to this source string. Um, and this screenshot then will be available for all other languages. So because it's attached to the English string and not to a language file. So this gives you more uh, context. So that helps you with uh, the translation. Uh, the same goes for explanation text. Maybe a, a screenshot is a bit too much, but uh, in that case, you can also add an explanation text saying something like, uh, watch out, this is uh, not this page, but this uh, translation is for this. Uh, and then this text will also be uh, visible for everyone, uh, not uh, depending on the language they're translating in. Uh, another nice feature is that you can compare translations. And with this, I mean that uh, if you go to your profile settings, uh, you can there indicate in which uh, language you are competent in. So if, for example, I am translating to Dutch, but I've indicated that I am also uh, competent in German, I can also look up the German translation, if there is one already, while I'm translating to Dutch. So I can, uh, well, that may help me in, in translating the English source. Um, and the last one is, of course, you can uh, make use of the already existing translations that we that already exist. So, for example, if you are uh, using uh, Dataverse uh, version 4.6, you don't have to start from scratch if you're lucky, because if there's, for example, a 4.2 translation already available, you can import this translation. And then uh, WebLate will see uh, the strings that are missing, just like if after you did an upgrade, for example. So you can uh, take advantage of that. Um, I think these are the main points. Let me switch to the next one. Uh, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, 
the procedures. I was I already mentioned the, the versions. So I don't think that everyone here will have the same version of uh, Dataverse installed or is planning to install it. Um, and so for this reason, we propose that in the in Weblate we'll we'll have a separate project for each version. Uh, so we don't have to depend on it on each other to have uh, almost the, uh, always the latest version installed. So you can work on the, the version you would like to have at that moment. Um, well, this means that some, um, yeah, you if you're the only one working on one version, you can of course um, take advantage of the collaboration that can be uh, done. Um, not within within the same within the same language, and you can make use of the glossary that already exists because the glossaries can be shared in between the projects. So that's nice. Um, for other procedures, we propose to uh, save all the translations in the GitHub. This is the GitHub from the Global Dataverse Community Consortium. So you, everyone who wants to join can see what's already been done and you can reuse uh, language files if they are, if they are available. Um, for now, we will do this manually. So if you want to do this, you can uh, send an email and we will upload it. But in the future, we will try to have this connection with GitHub uh, automated. So hopefully that uh, will work. Um, Another thing is that we would like to have the project access control set as protected. So that means that uh, our SESDA web blade will be visible for everybody. So you can, everyone can find it on the internet and they can take a look at it, but we will uh, set it up like um, that only chosen users can make changes. So for example, I gave you all an invitation and only after that, you will be able to uh, access the translation and save real translations. And during the project, uh, the task members of uh, task 5.2, the project members of task 5.2, uh, we will be uh, responsible for the administrative side. Um, and it's also important to know that you can um, configure settings on project level, and we will probably have multiple projects because of the um, difference in the software version we are using. Uh, but still, we would like to have everything, uh, every settings the same in order to well, avoid confusing. Um, well, if you later on switch to another version, maybe the settings will be different. So we would like to avoid that. Uh, we propose to enable the review workflow, uh, but it's not mandatory to use it. Um, so if you want to use uh, appoint a reviewer, you can let us know. But if you don't want to, you can just leave it as it is. <clears throat> and we will also enable the possibility to do suggestions because I don't see no need to hide this. But, um, and lastly, I want to mention mention the, the user settings uh, because we propose to give everyone, of course, the option to save a translation, uh, to add the screenshots to the source strings, uh, to add terms to the glossary. And for now, I've also turned on um, the settings that you can upload your own language files. Um, I think <clears throat> that in future, if, if everything's a bit settled, I will um, disable this in order to prevent uh, everyone from deleting other ones' uh, uh, languages or making mistakes with deleting your own language files, just to prevent that from happening. But for now, it, I thought it would be good for everyone to have a try and upload your own files and uh, yeah, just to try it out, I've put this on. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or, or questions about these, these procedures, just put them in the chat so we can discuss this in the, during the Q&A. 
this is just from our side, our, our proposals. Uh, and I just want to mention lastly that, um, well, the URL again of the Weblate application, it's now hosted by SESTA. Uh, if you haven't uh, asked for access yet, I think you all did, or you should have all have uh, received the invitation, but if something went wrong, you can resend an email to training at sesta.eu and uh, we will try to send the invitation again. And also, if you already have an account and you really want to get going, uh, but you need a project for version X, just let us know and we can create it and give you access to it. So you can uh, send an email to this uh, training email address. Um, I think that's my part for now. So I will give the floor to my colleague from Austin, who will uh, talk about her experience about <laughs> <laughs> translating to German. Thank you, Laura. Um, as you already mentioned, um, I will share with you my experiences from translating the user interface into German. I mean, in Weblate, it now says German, uh, Austrian German, but in principle, we're not that different from German German. Um, our starting point was, as already mentioned, a first translation to German in a SESTA ERIC project called Dataverse EU in 2018. Uh, back then, we translated the search facets, Laura already mentioned, uh, the metadata blocks and the bundle properties file. We started with version 4.8.6 of the bundle properties, and then we retranslated some to fit version 4.9.4. So it's been a while. Um, there are more recent versions, a lot of them already out there. Uh, and what we did, uh, we received the, the bundle properties file, which uh, it looks kind of like a text file, and we put it into an Excel sheet. So we had the English original, um, then a field for the German translation. Uh, and then um, we also used the French translation as a reference point. Uh, what we wanted to do is, uh, for me to translate the user interface. So I started out uh, translating it, but I'm not a professional translator. So after one 1,700 lines of the Excel sheet, I said, I can't do it anymore. It's too much work and we were on a deadline. So we decided to hire a professional translator uh, with experiences in technological translations. Um, and she then uh, went over my translations that I did to make them more cohesive. And she also then translated the metadata blocks and the search facets. Uh, one thing that was very hard for me also in the beginning to decide from, for, from our point of view was um, the gender component. Because in German, uh, you distinguish between, for example, a male user and a female user. So the male user would be Nutzer and the female user would be Nutzerin. And of course, especially in technological fields, also in the German language, male words dominate. But as we are very aware that gender is uh, important, we decided um, to use neutral terms where possible. For example, there is a gender neutral plural form of users, which is Nutzende. And we also used the German gender dictionary for a reference point. Another thing that we did is to use a medial capital I, which is in German Binnen I. Uh, so, for example, you write a, a, a capital I in Managerin. Uh, to combine both the male and female form, which is both shorter than managerin slash manager, and also still has the, the female form in there. One of the challenges that both I and the professional translator faced were uh, the placeholders and uh, the missing context. So um, as you can see in the screenshot, um, it was sometimes hard to say, what was meant in the braces. So for example, there is a zero in a brace that could be um, the name of a dataverse. 
or the name of a data set that was created. So it wasn't always easy um, for me and the translator to decide uh, what, how to translate this in uh, that was before the braces. Um, and the context, where does this show up? So where do you even see this um, notification? So you can say, oh, that's probably when you create a dataverse, then you get this message. This is why we, um, when I first was approached by Marion and um, Laura, I was very happy to test the web plate and do some translations because it was very, very easy to create new languages and import existing files. So we tried uh, creating new languages. And also I tried to import existing files based on the user guide that we um, uh, made. And that was very easy. And it took a while until uh, the file was ingested, but then it was very easily done and you just have to wait. Um, it's very easy to have also the context by adding screenshots. So you wouldn't have to wonder where does the, this notification pop up because maybe the, already another translator added a screenshot to the source language. And so you can have a look, how does this look for a user? You can fill in the glossary for words and can always be translated in the same way. Um, you can cooperate with others. I mean, I haven't done that for German yet, but if you're interested, I'm open for cooperation. And you can use other languages as reference points, and I will show you that in screenshots now. Um, so after I log in, what I usually do, um, I decide on the component of the language I want to translate. So this is what the interface looks like. And then I'm always jealous that the Slovenian uh, translation has more uh, translated terms than the German one. But I decide on the properties file and uh, two lines above that you can also see the citation metadata block in English. Um, so you have to decide on the component you want to translate. I then select strings needing action without suggestions to work on really new untranslated words because there are a lot of um, possible things that I could have a look at as you see in my screenshot. There are some things that need checks, there are um, failed checks and other things and there are already strings where I made suggestions, but I wasn't sure. So um, if I would choose uh, the option, I think it's called uh, strings needing action, then I would also see the ones where I already suggested changes. So I always, if I really want to do new words, then I choose this option, strings needing action without suggestions. I just wanted to point out some things. Uh, you already saw Laura pointed out the text field where the, the actual uh, translation um, is happening. So this is uh, the, in the middle of the page um, where you enter the translation. What I want to point out as very useful is the clone source function. Uh, because if then it's just uh, copying the English original um, the same way into the text field of your language and you then can you don't have to worry about did i get all the breaks or did it copy something wrong or did i forget anything so then the clone source function is very useful uh, and you can then click either save or suggest um, at the bottom you can also see uh, the function of the other languages so i could then see how uh, in dutch and how in french and how in slovenian uh, people translated exactly these strings or this key and on the right upper corner, you can see the glossary. Here, for example, I let Weblate memorize the word contact, which in this case is a, a noun. And I could also add uh, contact, uh, the verb um, that may need conjugation. Um, but it's uh, very easy because you, when you then click on contact, uh, it's automatically also copied into the text field of the translation. I think that was it from my side. And now I'm handing over back to Marion, I think. So if you have questions, you can uh, write it to training at sesta.au. Uh, or um, you also can um, uh, contact uh, Laura or me. And um, 
but 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 the, the best way is to to write an email to training at sesdet.au if you would like to uh, be part of the uh, base camp so the communication platform of sesta about dataverse we can add you to this and um uh, so if if the if you would like to to start in a specific version of dataverse lawa can make an, a project of it and um so the idea is that people work because you it's always uh, um you have to do it yourself and then you will encounter uh, issues so please start if you are planning to 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 have a, a, a translation and after the summer we have a follow up workshop and we can discuss uh the user experience and uh, if there are a lot of issues yeah we can we, we can try to solve this uh within the shock project if if so if there are um additional functionality that has to be uh, developed so if there are no other questions then I think we can um, stop the webinar. Thank you for your attention. The webinar and the guide uh, and the slides will uh, will be published, and uh, will be the, the links will be sent to you afterwards. Thank you for your attention. Bye.